Andrew couldn't believe what he had just seen. Ava had told him that her friend Hazel was terrible at math, and that she... Andrew couldn't believe what he had just seen. Ava had told him that her friend Hazel was terrible at math, and that she almost always failed her exams. However, not only had she solved the problem that he had given her, but she had also done it using methods that would never have occurred to him. Why is Ava giving me the wrong information about this woman? He wondered. She's made me look like a fool in front of everyone. Ava was just as surprised as Andrew. She knew better than anyone that Hazel never studied, and that she absolutely hated math. Her answer is correct, Andrew said, forcing a smile. As he said this, a couple of students started clapping, and one even whistled. Way to go, Hazel! Someone called out, excited by the fact that a student like her had managed to show up their professor. Hazel blushed, but didn't say anything. Please, be quiet, Andrew said. Class isn't over yet, and we still have a lot to do. He then instructed the students to open their textbooks to page 35, and began to explain what was written there. Ava was too busy wondering how Hazel had solved the equation to concentrate on what Andrew was saying. Maybe she's been taking private classes in the evenings, she thought. Otherwise, there's no way that she could have improved so much. When Andrew was looking in the other direction, she leaned over toward Hazel. How did you solve that equation so easily? She whispered. Have you been taking extra classes or something? You must have a pretty good tutor. No way, Hazel said. I'd never have the patience to take extra classes. Then how did you do it? Ava asked again. What do you mean? Hazel said. Why shouldn't I have been able to do it? Do you think I'm stupid or something? It's just that you've never liked math, Ava said. It's almost like you answered correctly just to impress Andrew. <laughs> How exactly would wanting to impress him have helped me know the right answer? Hazel scoffed. Ava realized that she had said the wrong thing and kept quiet. Hazel, who was very tired, was happy to be left alone. Convinced that Andrew wouldn't dare to bother her anymore, she stretched out her legs, closed her eyes, and spent the rest of the lesson drifting in and out of sleep. When class was over, everyone left as quickly as they could. Hazel wasn't in a hurry, and she waited until all the other students were gone before leaving the room. As she was walking down the corridor, she heard Ava and Andrew talking to each other, but couldn't figure out where they were. After looking around for a minute, she realized that they were standing in one of the empty classrooms and that the door had been left ajar. She stood next to the door to listen to what they were saying. Why does she act like she can't stand me? Andrew said. I don't know, Ava replied. Ever since she was sick, she's been acting like a different person. I can't figure out what's going on with her anymore. In any case, we have to speed up our plan, Andrew said. Someone's already snatched away one of the businesses that we had our eyes on. I might lose my grip on the company thanks to the St. James family. You worry too much, Ava said. It's almost certain that you'll take over the business. No one else in your family has a chance against you, not even your brothers. Ava then hooked her arms around Andrew's neck and kissed him on the lips, confident that there was no one around to see them. Hazel clenched her fists in anger as she watched them through the crack in the door. Be careful, someone might see us. Andrew said, as he tactfully pulled out of Ava's embrace. My dad has already arranged for my elder brother, Adam, to travel overseas. That should keep him out of the way for a while. But it doesn't mean that he'll forget about his ambitions in the company forever. We have to put our plan into action as fast as we can, before he catches on to it. My younger brother, Tim, is another problem. I don't trust him at all. What do you think he wants? Ava asked. I don't know, Andrew said. If I could understand his intentions, I could deal with him easily, but I can't. 
He's very complicated, and it's almost impossible to figure out what he's thinking. Hazel hadn't heard Tim's name for a long time. He was the youngest of the Finch brothers, and had a different mother from the others. However, few people knew who his mother was. In her past life, Tim had been the only one who had ever helped Hazel when the other members of the Finch family had mistreated her. As much as she had appreciated his sympathy, she also knew that he was ambitious, cunning, and very good at hiding what he was really thinking. Within just a few years, he had managed to gain control of a large section of the entertainment industry. Even if Andrew managed to take over the St. James family business empire, he still wouldn't be powerful enough to dislodge Tim from his position in the entertainment world. Maybe Tim expected Andrew to take over the family business all along, Hazel thought. That's probably why he got into the entertainment industry instead. But now it looks like Andrew has plans for him. Maybe I should warn him. We'd better get going, Andrew said. Hazel might wonder where you are and start to suspect something. Try to find out whatever you can about her, but be careful. It seems like we didn't know her as well as we thought. Don't worry, leave it to me, Ava said. She's easy to manipulate. You just have to be nice to her, and then she sucks everything up like a sponge. She's convinced that I'm her best friend and would never suspect that I'm just using her. Ava's words took Hazel by surprise. It seems like making friends with her was a mistake all along, she thought. In my past life, I thought she was such a good friend, but now I know that she was just taking advantage of me. How could I have been so blind? I definitely won't get caught in the same trap again. Hazel saw Andrew and Ava walk toward the door, and ducked behind some nearby lockers so that they wouldn't see her. As she watched them walk away, she made up her mind never to let them bully her again. The rest of the day passed just like any other. Hazel had originally planned to go and see how the Southwest property construction project was going, since Theo was out of town and couldn't check on it himself. Although Hazel's grandfather was still around to make sure that everything went smoothly, Hazel still liked to show her face from time to time. However, just as her last class finished, it began to rain. Oh no, it's raining, Ava said dramatically, as if it were the end of the world. My family's driver can't come today. How am I going to get home? Hazel, how are you getting home? The sound of Ava's voice made Hazel feel sick. Why is she asking me? she thought. Is this another one of her plots to make me feel like we're friends when she's really just using me? As they stood there, Andrew approached them from the other side of the corridor. What's up? he asked. Is it the rain? Yes, Ava replied. I don't have a ride today, and I don't think Hazel has a way to get home either. What a coincidence, Andrew said, smiling. It's lucky you ran into me. I came in my car today. I can drive you home if you'd like. I wouldn't call it luck, Hazel thought. Does he really think that I'll believe that he keeps running into me by accident? Although Hazel doubted Andrew's intentions, she decided not to say anything for the moment. In any case, she did need someone to drive her home, since it was raining very heavily. It's almost like we were fated to meet as it started to rain, Andrew said, laughing good-humoredly. What do you say? Do you want me to drive you both home? It's more like we were cursed to meet, Hazel thought bitterly. Sure, that would be great, Ava said, before Hazel even had a chance to respond for herself. If I'm late, my parents will start to worry. Come on, Hazel, let's go. Are you sure it's not a bother? Hazel said, still unsure if she wanted to go or not. It had just occurred to her that Ava lived closer than she did, meaning that she would be left in the car alone with Andrew after he dropped her off. It's no problem at all, Andrew said. It's only a few minutes extra. Hazel knew that he was lying, and that dropping them off would cost him quite a lot of time. Despite her doubts, however, she decided to accept his offer. 
She knew that if she refused him too many times, he and Ava might start to suspect something. Okay, but only if you're sure that it's not a problem, Hazel said. Ava breathed a sigh of relief. For a moment, she had been worried that her plan would fail and that Ava would refuse to go with them. The three of them walked to the parking lot. Luckily, the area was protected from the rain. Otherwise, they would have been soaked. Neither of them noticed the two men in a flashy sports car watching them from a distance. One of them was Connor, Theo's nephew. The other was Theo's driver. Ever since the incident at the basketball court, Connor had noticed that there was something different about Hazel. He had expected her to be less gullible than the other girls of her age. However, when he saw her walking side by side with Andrew, he felt disappointed. She seemed like an interesting person, he thought, but it looks like she's gone and fallen for the first cute rich guy to come her way. I was hoping that she'd have more sense than that. When will Uncle Theo be back? Connor asked the driver. He'll be back tonight, the driver said. Do you want me to take you to his place? Yes, that would be great, Connor said. I'd like to see him as soon as I can. As they drove off, Connor couldn't stop thinking of Hazel. I'm sure she's hiding something, he thought. I have no idea what it is, but I'm convinced that she's not who she makes herself out to be. Meanwhile, Andrew's car had driven off with Hazel and Ava in it. Almost as soon as she sat down, Hazel received a message from Theo's assistant, Josh. Theo will be getting back tonight, the message read. Damn it, Hazel thought. Why did he have to come back today? Well, I should be there for him when he gets back, if I want to have him help me in the future. As Hazel sat looking at her phone, she began to shiver. The rain had caused the temperature to drop a lot, and she hadn't brought a sweater. Are you cold? Andrew asked, and leaned over to turn on the heating. Now you should stop shivering, he said. Sorry that I didn't turn it on earlier. Thanks, Hazel said bluntly. She already knew how kind and attentive Andrew could make himself out to be. Anyone who didn't know better would never be able to guess that it was all just an act, and that underneath it, he was actually a totally different person. Even when they had been dating in her past life, he had never shown signs of the monster that he really was. Hazel stared out the window to avoid looking at Andrew. As she sat there, she thought about the best way she could please Theo. It would be a good idea to go to his place and meet him, she thought. But if I ask Andrew to take me there, he'll definitely get suspicious. I'll have to go home first. Soon, they arrived at Ava's house. Ava thanked Andrew for the ride and ran quickly inside to avoid getting wet. Andrew reversed out of Ava's driveway and drove off slowly. Now that it was only the two of them, he drove almost half the speed as before. This was the first time that he and Hazel had been alone since she was reborn, and she couldn't help suspecting that he was going as slowly as possible to extend their time together. Are you always so quiet? Andrew asked when, after a few minutes, Hazel hadn't said a single word. Sometimes, Hazel said. Normally when I don't know someone, I don't say much. And to be honest, I'm not used to spending time with my instructors after hours. It's kind of weird. When Hazel said this, Andrew chuckled. I know what that's like, he said. I remember seeing one of my professors once at the mall when I was still a student, and I ran away so that I didn't have to talk to her. But I'm not really your professor, so you don't have to feel strange. In fact, I'm not even a professor at all. I just offered to help out since no one else was available at such short notice. I'm only a few years older than you. Most of my friends are actually around your age. If you're trying to say that we should be friends, you should know that I don't make friends very quickly, Hazel said. In fact, I'm quite antisocial most of the time. Although this wasn't exactly true, 
She wanted to let Andrew know that she wasn't going to get caught in his trap as easily as he thought. She already knew what a good actor he was and how charming he could be. Of course, she also knew how horrible he could be as well. As they were talking, Andrew swerved toward the side of the road and braked suddenly. Hazel, who had the bad habit of not using her seatbelt, jolted forward. After stopping the car on the side of the road, Andrew reached over and placed his arms around her as if to comfort her. Are you all right? He asked. I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have stopped so quickly. I forgot that the roads are wet. Hazel wiggled out of Andrew's arms. There was no reason for him to have pulled over, and she guessed that he had swerved to make her feel scared and vulnerable. Unfortunately, even if she had wanted to get out of the car, it was still raining heavily, and she had no idea where they were. It was almost as if Andrew had been driving around aimlessly instead of taking her toward her house. I'm fine, Hazel said. It's my fault for not wearing a seatbelt. Actually, I pulled over because I wanted to tell you something, Andrew said. Maybe I shouldn't have done it, but now that we're here, I may as well admit it. Couldn't you have told me while you were driving? Hazel said. It's something personal, Andrew said. I didn't feel like I could tell you unless I stopped and looked in your eyes. It's just that, ever since I first saw you... Hazel guessed what Andrew was about to say, and even considered getting out of the car in the rain then and there to avoid hearing it. Luckily, just as she was thinking desperately what to do next, her phone rang, forcing Andrew to stop speaking mid-sentence. Hazel looked at her phone to check who was calling, and saw that it was Theo. Hi, Grandpa, she said, unsure that Theo would guess that she was pretending. I'm so happy you called. When Theo heard this, he knew immediately that Hazel was in some kind of mess. Is something wrong? He asked. It's late already. Why are you still out? Don't worry, I'm fine, Hazel said. I got held up by the rain, that's all. But I'll be home very soon. Hazel then said goodbye and hung up. That was my grandpa, she told Andrew, pretending to sound worried. I have to get home as soon as possible. Something urgent has come up. Please, can you take me as fast as you can? Okay, sure. Don't worry, Andrew said, hiding his disappointment. Since he had no other choice, he started the car and drove toward Hazel's house. This time, he drove at the correct speed and in the right direction. After talking with Hazel... Theo put his phone down angrily, convinced that she must have been spending time with another man behind his back. As he sat there feeling annoyed, Josh came to tell him that his nephew, Connor, had arrived to see him. He's waiting for you downstairs, Josh said. Theo stood up and went downstairs to meet him. Connor was sitting on the sofa, eating a slice of watermelon that he had taken from the fridge, just as he would have done if he had been in his own home. Uncle Theo, you're back early, Connor said when he saw his uncle. What a surprise. I thought you weren't going to be back until evening. Theo went and sat down on the couch next to his nephew, indicating to Josh that he should take the watermelon away. What are you doing here? He asked Connor. When I heard that you were coming back this evening, I decided to come and visit, Connor said. It's been ages since I've seen you. And I've missed you. 